everyone, and welcome to today's episode of our Seven Resorts in Seven Days series. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table for this review by Mr. Rhino Clavin. Hello. And back in the production nook, the lovely and talented producer, Mr. Craig Williams. How are we all doing? How y'all doing? <laughs> all right, so <clears throat> this, uh, this episode, uh, we are going to discuss Pop Century. Um, arguably of the actual moderate or the actual value resorts, the most popular when I say actual technically uh, art of animation is also considered a value resort, but it's really hard to keep a straight face when you're saying that when most of the rooms go for $300 a night. Um, But uh, not the case at pop century. It's a true value resort. And uh, I was not there. Uh, for most of the day uh, that you guys were doing. I was there for a little bit of it, mm-hmm. but you guys uh, did most of it. And Rhino, I believe you stayed. I did, yes. At the yeah. resort. So let's start Let's start at the beginning. Um, let's start with your check-in process. How did check-in go? Um, I thought it was very slow, if you remember. I feel like we... Oh, that's right. I was there for that. Yeah, there weren't, there weren't a lot of people really in line. It was just the girl was kind of... Kind of slow. Um, like, I, I don't know if she was a trainee or something. There was, no, that was the second girl because we, we had to go back to the, the front desk. But the whole process just kind of took a lot longer. And we don't have children with us unless you count me. But it's like, I, I, could, uh, I could feel for a family that's got some rowdy kids that are just trying to check in and get into their hotel and get out of there. So it was a little bit of a process and nothing necessarily wowed me. By the by, the people who were checking us in, it was it was forgettable, I guess. But um, but it wasn't really a negative experience. I don't think. What was not forgettable, on the other hand, yeah. was what happened when we got to our room, um, the first room we were assigned, which we lasted, I think, all of about twelve seconds in yeah. there. The stench of bleach was so overpowering; it was literally burning my throat. Um, you could smell it outside of the room. Like I remember, like right as you were like opening the door, I was like, hmm, I could smell bleach from now, here. Now I'm I'm all for I'm all for clean <clears throat> hotel rooms. Um, what are you trying to kill <laughs> when you use that much bleach? Um, and there was no way. There was no way. And I've heard this about these rooms before, so I don't know if it is a, a mildew problem that Pop Century may have. That leads them, I mean, that's not uncommon at hotels in Florida because of the humidity through most of the year. It's not uncommon for there to be mildew problems. Um, But it was so unbelievably overpowering. I don't know how anybody could have sustained in that room. So we went back and asked for another room, preferably, you know, hold the bleach. Well, you know, and they kind of, I hate this, like, comment i you know that it stuck with me still because this was weeks ago i just that they were like well i can't guarantee that the other room's not going to smell like this too because we do use bleach in our product and i was like okay well it smells like somebody dumped gallons and gallons of it in a bathtub like it was burning and like you could smell it on us you know so i don't i don't like it when they give you that stick it to you i mean she also let's be real the block that we were put in was probably we were the first people to show up for the day and they're all cleaned by the same housekeeper so it's most likely if if the housekeeper did it to that room, it was probably done to every single one of those rooms. And we weren't too far off from that initial room. And this one did have a tiny bleach smell, not as nearly as strong. This one smelled like, this one smelled like somebody's gym bag. (laughs) I I know you guys said I, I was in there and I like, when I walked back in at the end of the night, after walking around the hotel, I was just like, like it was it. And I, enough that like, it, I'm not. I don't like to cause waves or trouble or anything like that. But I, I was thinking, if I was there for multiple days, I probably would have went back and been like, "Can you move me again?" But well, uh, yeah. also I should mention that uh, the room that we were in was an older room. It was not one of the newly renovated rooms. We were able to go back and shoot one of the new rooms, mm-hmm. um, so that we could talk about it. Um, but uh, you know, in spite of our request for a new room, we got stuck here they're in the process right now we did this review in uh, february of 2018 and uh, the hotel was in the middle of its renovations um so some of the rooms had been moved over to the new 
uh, the new style, um, while others had not. We were in rooms that had not been. But you guys, you two did get a chance to see the new room, yeah. correct? And I, I will say that if I had been in a new room, it would definitely would have impacted how I felt about my stay. The well, new room was beautiful. Tell me tell me about that. Tell me about the well, difference between the two rooms. The new room has... Okay, so I'll, I'll tell you the old room first. Um, uh, it's it's It was carpet, um, and it was the uh, most uh, hideous uh, carpet... Uh, design I've ever probably seen could cause seizures upon just staring at it. But <laughs> I think it's actually the same design that is in still in the front lobby. When you check in, there's um, areas to sit that are against the decade walls and they've got kind of this pattern on the, the cushions. It, that to me looks like it's the same pattern, dirty, just a weird choice because it all made it made it look dirty and dark in the room. But you are obsessed with flooring of all kinds. <laughs> like I would mention the fact that they've already changed the sheets to that they're all plain basic white. There's only one picture hanging on the wall I, I like to, to give it I theming. Like to my, my feet, my feet are on vacation too. Not not just the rest of the body. So I, regardless, yeah, whatever, I do me. think the smell was probably old carpeting and stuff like that, you know, so, but I can't really complain too much knowing they're redoing the rooms across the way, but, um, the beds were unusual. Um, they were the, the I, double, I, I, double, double size. Um, they, well, that's common for, uh, that's common for the, uh, values though, right? The, the new, that is not, changing not to the new one, but, um, yeah. So, which is fine. I'm used to this. The smaller one, but uh, it, it the mattress was just weird. It, it felt very like somebody took a bag kind of and just threw a bunch of springs in it, and then you were like, "Here's your mattress." Like, so it it had a lot of like it was a bed that if I had bounced really hard on the end, it would have shot me forward. Um, it was like when you're a kid and you go stay at your grandparents' house, yeah. and they're still using the mattress from when your parents were still living with them. <laughs> yeah, and it's like okay. No, they need to invest if they expect us to visit. All the bodies that have come before me here in this bed with me. Um, so it was that, and then you've got your you know normal shower vanity area that I believe there was a curtain, maybe no mm-hmm. curtain. Yeah, mm-hmm. I never closed it, so I wasn't sure. But um, uh, so just and there was one piece of um, art on the wall that was like some random. I, I don't know if it was like a decade art or something like that. Um, it, it, it's in the video we did. Yeah, it was. We're in the, we were in the 60s, I believe, in the middle with uh, – we stayed on the Play-Doh side. And yeah. then on the other side is uh, Blue in the Jungle Book. Yeah. But but regardless, it was it was you know kind of forgettable or whatever. And in and um, but the new the new room was beautiful. It's it's hardwood floors. You come in. It's it was a queen size bed, right? Yeah. So what they've done with the beds in the new renovated rooms is there is one standard queen bed that's always in there uh, and so big, so comfortable, exactly what you should be getting at every Disney resort. Mm-hmm. And then they've borrowed from Art of Animation the uh, the, the pull-down bed. bed, the yeah. Murphy bed, that is used as just a table with chairs in the day. And the room we looked at had two chairs, so I'm guessing that's going to be the standard theme. But that will give you an extra queen bed in that Murphy bed. And so it now comes standard with two queen beds. And just like on Disney Cruise Line and what we saw in the Coronado room, uh, the bed, the queen bed that is there all the time is raised up. So that way you have storage. You have under storage it. underneath. Yeah. 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 Which was very nice. I like that. Um, the bathroom um, was very bright, very colorful. Um, this is in the new room. In the new room. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it had so it has like the mirror, the the uh, the vanity area, but the vanity area has shelves everywhere on the side, yeah. on the on all the sides. So it's not like the old ones where it was just the mirror sink and you know big big. Uh, uh, what am I looking for? Counter. Yeah. Um, and you just I always felt like those feel messy because you then you put all your products out and stuff like this. This felt like you could really kind of break down your stuff and it felt a little homier, yeah. you know. Again, just like Coronado, they they did away with some of like the hanger space that because before you would have the the one shelf that went across and you plenty of room to hang stuff up, but instead now you have a little nooks where you can store things and then uh, a tiny tiny closet with the ironing board, but I, I think overall it presents a lot cleaner appeal when you're in there in terms of the shower though uh, yeah, that was unpopular nice. for what? some people 
the shower the shower area that we did see was one of the ones with the built in um, the pump the built in pumps for the toilet but it was a nice pump it it had it wasn't like the one that I saw in a photo which was that kind of one that cheap Bed Bath and Beyond plasticky pump that you just hit the button it was the three full bottles of the um, the higher end. I forget the name, H2O. the H2O products. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, it, so it was three glass bottles in this nice silver or stainless steel locked device. Mm. And so it was like, I was actually like, oh, I like I like this enough that I would probably put one of these at my house like this, you know? Um, and it had the dual shower head too. So there were yeah. two, there were two shower heads. And just one more thing with the theming of the room now. Uh, oh yeah. It's been kind of criticized that they're going down on it so the major theming you're going to see there's above the headboard on the queen bed there's kind of uh, it's a very colorful picture of mickey it's like the andy warhol like the four colors yeah Yeah. exactly well i was probably remiss at the beginning of this for those who have never been to pop century and have no idea what we're talking about (laughs) um the whole theme of this resort is uh decades yeah so you know uh, the building that represents like the '60s, you're going to see like uh, peace signs and sunflowers, and you know those are the big iconic items around there. And they do for the '70s and the '80s mm-hmm. disco, like your Rubik's oh, yeah. cubes, yeah. and the yeah. yeah, the '90s is like CD players. And, and the so internet. each building, each building is themed around a different decade. Now, originally, it was planned that this was going to be the f- uh, what is currently Pop Century was going to be the first phase, and then they were going to do a second phase uh, with earlier decades, but uh, that was right around 9-11, and uh, after 9-11, those plans were scrapped, and uh, we often used to refer to the unfinished part of Pop Century as Sarajevo, because it looked like a <laughs> bombed out yeah. a bombed out city. Um, not that Sarajevo looks like that now, but you know, for those of us from, that were from the 90s, that remember the 90s, uh, you know, that was the reference. Um, well, the, the, uh, the, so and continuing that thing you're talking about theming, when you pull the Murphy bed down, the backdrop, the backsplash is like this cute Pluto um, kind of very pop art looking uh, thing back there that I, I, I loved it. Like I, for me, it was it. I know people have the fear was, oh, it's not themed. It's not Disney enough. And I was like, this is pop art. And this is yeah. the 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 colors of the room all kind of come together. It. I was like, if that were my room, I probably never would have left. I, it. I will tell you, whoever is doing the new room designs, whoever their designer is or designers, they're doing an amazing job. Yeah. Because taking a look at that one over Coronado Springs was phenomenal. I mean, it was absolutely gorgeous. Um, and so I imagine this is probably on that. Yeah. On I, that level. Yeah. Honestly, this was the nicest of any of the value rooms right now that exist. I, you know, I've been in, I haven't been in the little mermaid rooms over at art of animation, but I've been in cars and I've been in finding Nemo. Understand if you have a bigger group, that might be great for it. But if I was a family of four, I would totally ignore that. And I would stay at pop century right now based on the rooms. They wow. are that nice. And it was it, beautiful. It, it would, it would have once been they finished the, experience. once they finished the renovations. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 100%. Do we know when did, have, have they said when there's, there's only two more buildings left? I believe the, the and six, those are both the sixties. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, so as long as you're not in the sixties. Yeah. Um, yeah. Boo. I, I'll tell you it, it you know, it, I'm not trying to complain, but it severely impacted the quality of my stay, that renovation, um, because it was going on. It started really early in the morning. I'm sure maybe it wasn't like 9 a.m. It was before, I swear it was before 9 a.m., but it was the crane was right outside of my room. There were construction workers walking up and down my hallway the whole time. And it was like um, it was just it was really, really loud. And it made me very uncomfortable going up and down the stairs with all the construction work because I kept feeling like oh, I'm in an area I'm not supposed to be in. Um, but I will tell you that resort and where I stayed based on the construction and the resort that it was, was so loud. I have never, I've never been at a Disney resort where I've been like, I can hear everything happening right now. So I think that just had to do with where I was and the construction because I also met some listeners while we were there and I sat with them at the, um, the bar that's outside of the 60s pool and they were in a new room and that is one of their favorite resorts and stuff like that so yeah i mean pop century mm-hmm. is very popular yeah. um and uh so all right so we talk- talked about the rooms yeah let's go uh let's go over to you know some other areas um what stood out for you what was the thing for the two of you because you spent a lot more time there than i did what really stood out to you about the resort that you liked 
Uh, for me, it's just the entire grounds, and I know that's based on uh, that's why our uh, the All Stars are so popular too for the theming that you see around. And Pop Century is arguably one of my favorites when it comes to that. I, I love going over to the the eighties building section mm-hmm. and seeing a massive Roger Rabbit because you just don't you don't see that character at yeah. Disney anymore. And I love looking at their their idea of the nineties with uh, CD ROMs and cell like those early and, yeah. computers and early cell phones. And it's just and you just look at all the the history that's like it's obviously the glossed over version of it. Everything's pretty and shiny. But I don't I, I'm very nostalgic for like that stuff. I love watching documentaries on different time periods. So I, I love the theme. Well, I also around. I also enjoy the shadow boxes. They yeah, have I was gonna say in that was the lobby. Yeah. The shadow boxes <clears throat> with, you know, there was like an old Sega Dreamcast mm. in one, and you have from from different eras. You have these this, this memorabilia, which is just in and of itself is really really interesting to look at. I also yeah. think they have one of the better uh, the arcade. Well, arcade, but also the um, the, the the merchandise store. Mm-hmm. Um, they had they had merchandise that was um, specific to the resort too, which I thought yeah, was really cool. Which they was had some nice. Glasses, we, we, don't that. <clears throat> we don't always see that. We don't always see that. Over the All Stars, it was you know All Star Resorts. You weren't getting All Star movies. Yeah, you were just getting All Star Resorts. But Pop Century had its own merchandise. It also had some eclectic merchandise that I wasn't finding necessarily in oh, every other. There one. was stuff that I I. I ended up not being able to find at other places was the, um, so I was going to see my friend Kim and, and she likes the character hats and they had the chewy, you know, the Chewbacca, um, you know, it's got the thing that come down. It's like the sleeve, like one of those. And they had the wicket, the, the Ewok one. And I then was like, okay, I forgot to get it before I left. And I was like, they'll have this at Disney Springs. I can get this at world of Disney. And then they were like, no, only one in Hollywood Studios and then whatever else. And I was like, oh, man. I was like, do I want to go back to Pop Century? But I thought that was cool that it was a little like what you said. It was all kind of over the place. But, you know, so they had a lot of they had a lot of cool stuff. And of course, the 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 uh, uh, the merchandise store opens up into the, the food court. So mm-hmm. let's talk about the food. Yeah. Um, what <laughs> Pop Century, this food court oftentimes uh, does not get good reviews. What were your thoughts? Okay, um, so I guess I had a meal for each part of the day there. Um, our um, meal at lunch was okay. It was okay for me. Well, it was the I, I said in our in the other video I did about the burger I had was kind of a mishmash because it was the plant based thing. Your you had the um, fried chicken that you did not speak highly of, and you no. had the meatloaf, and uh, it was honestly that was honestly the worst fried chicken I'd ever. Yeah. Had. And I I think it was kind of lackluster. I had a like a sandwich for dinner that night that was that was better. But I will say that I actually did enjoy the breakfast I had there because there was a, I felt like they tried to be a little bit more creative. And it's not like groundbreaking, but there was a um, breakfast pizza like a black breakfast flatbread that I had there that I was like, okay, don't get your hopes up. But I took it and dear God, uh, by the way, breakfast in that cafeteria, you might want to just grab it and go to your room because it, it is crowded Nuts, in yeah. the morning. Yeah, but but with, you know, th- that's a hotel or a resort, excuse me, where people are going to be on the go. You know, they're in there, they're grabbing, they're going to the to the park. So I, I understandably so, but um, I took it back to the, to the, um, to my room and the breakfast flatbread was, uh, I would go back and get it again. It was super, super good. I really liked that. There, were, there was other like standard fare, like omelets and stuff like that, but um yeah, I I do think the food court could use some work. I don't I don't it's just it's unexciting. It's all, you know. Craig, I I don't have a problem with it. I didn't have a problem with my meal that we had there the one day and I've never I've never had a problem with dining at Pop Century ever. I've mm-hmm. always I mean, I picked the stuff that I look at it first to make sure that it looks appetizing, and then I go with it. But I, you know, I I wish that everything could be uh, obviously landscape of flavors the over at Art of Animation. Yeah. Yeah. But that one was also, you know, once they started the plans on Art of Animation, they relooked at the buildings, they relooked at how they were doing everything in the kitchens. Obviously, too, it was set up to provide a better class. Of food and without taking theirs down completely, I don't know if they could make massive changes to their kitchen. Uh, and then also 
to keep up with the theme of Pop Century, having a, like a, the blend of comfort foods mm. with yeah. standard American fare. Uh, I don't know, but I. Again, I've just never had a problem with it. I think it's it's not the best, but it's also I, there's like far to, worse. It's like what you said. I'd like to see maybe a, um, sort of a visit. Like, okay, so if you're not great, like, well, let's pick stuff from each one of those decades that was very, very popular and maybe go with that, you know, TV dinners or something like that. And um, I don't know, kind of pick something big. I know what you're saying yeah. with comfort food, like the meatloaf. Here's, really. here's the issue. Eventually, it'll get back around like Cabana Bay, where some of the greatest stuff that was on Cabana Bay's like uh, their menus at the skyline or Bayliner diner over there, all this stuff that was like really based on the decades and the best stuff that all went away yeah. and led to more standard fare. And obviously pop century is getting a lot of first timers, maybe not a lot of adventurous eaters because of kids, families. And so they're going to always kind of regress. But I don't think if you're going there looking for a burger or chicken tender, stuff like that, you're not going to be disappointed. It's going to be very similar to what you get everywhere else. I do think the best, but but one of the things to remember, the best part about staying at this resort is if the if this particular eatery is not working for you, you are but a walk away over a bridge to the art of animation. Yeah. Um, so so I do like that staying at this resort, you actually do kind of get two options with with choices for like yeah. food food wise so that i i will give that a big big plus there um i also spent some time down at the the pool bar um we sat there for a little bit mm-hmm. we had that monument massive i i, I mean i had this you massive. had yeah. yeah i mean i just walked around with that for actually the next six hours i worked on that massive drink because that was in my room the next morning um but uh I met some um, listeners from Australia down there for a little while. And actually, we had a great time. We were just sitting there chatting, and we tried a couple of the other drinks and stuff. And um, what I learned then, too, is is really like the resort is kind of what you want to get out of it, too. So even if you're not in love maybe with like the theming of it, like you got to go in with an attitude of like who are you there with? You know, are you trying to – like it, not everything had gone well up to that point and then when I was with them and I all I remember now is sitting out there and laughing and enjoying the pool bar and like yeah it wasn't it wasn't this like great it's not the Polynesian it's not Trader Sam's it's not whatever but it was still like I had more fun there than I've had at Trader Sam's or any of these other places you know so I will it's about the company yeah I will say I'm not a fan of the pools here the 60s themed one and the bowling pool the over in the 50s and the computer pool uh, I I do not care for the areas that much i think they're as well as the buildings are represented the pools themselves are really lackluster but that's just my opinion on it i mean i i'm i mean it's a resort pool it's kind of like i i i i don't i don't think this is a resort that was necessarily designed for people to be like spending all their time here you know it's not it's not a destination resort like if i were to go to i don't mean to keep bringing up the polynesian but if i were to go to polynesian you know that's a really big investment and i think i'd be i'd want to make like a little mini vacation out of just the polynesian right whereas pop century like yeah i might take a day and we might like like if i were with my nephews bring them back we'd play in the pool and then we'd go back to the park or something like that so it's kind of like i understand why everything isn't going to be have a million amenities to it, you know? I don't right. Know. So um, we kind of briefly mentioned the arcade. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, value resorts and arcades, man. I, I, I love the arcade. They're fantastic. Yeah. They're there fantastic. was a lot of really, really cool games in there. I loved that one that we were, sh- the Space Invaders one that we were playing. That was really cool. That was really, yeah. I mean, there was just some absolutely, I mean, same little all-star movies. I said the same thing. It was this awesome arcade. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Really enjoyable, big, 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 big arcade. I don't know why. It it really seems the the lower the price of the resort, the bigger the arcade gets, um, which I'm fine with because I'll spend all my time in an arcade. Um, but uh, yeah, what do you, um, you know? We did have a, a an issue with. Uh, Oh, yes. Yeah. So uh, the machines weren't working in the arcade. Well, either. explain to people what you're talking about. So um, to play any one of the Disney arcade and in, in any of the resorts, you have to load up a um, like a card, uh, which I had in my wallet, but I took it out the other day. Because, yeah, I did too. Yeah. Uh, I was I, uh, kicking myself. But um, it you you put money on it and it gives you like points. So each one of the games is like four or credits. I'm sorry. So we, like a game might be four credits. One game might be eight credits, whatever. Um there are machines that that take debit 
or cash. And uh, but you know, it's 2018. I find that people carrying cash is. I don't carry it as much as I used to. So if you ever have an issue, go to the front desk and they can take care of that. Right. For well, you it was the, the, the machine was not working for us. Yeah. And so we had to go to the front desk and yeah, which was kind of annoying. Yeah. Which was kind of annoying because it also took like 15 minutes was, to get it resolved. Yeah. It, you had to be like really committed to going to the arcade, which that, that did annoy me. I mean, it was good that they could resolve it, but I don't. What were your overall impressions of the cast members we came across? I I didn't really have any bad experiences, but I talked the least to cast members. I will say the one that stuck out to me was, I believe it was this. I don't remember if it was the first time we checked in or the second one when we redid it. But we noticed behind the counter second that time. that was the second time yeah. behind the counter. We noticed uh, a whole bunch of like scrolls. They looked like wrapped up scrolls, and we were kind of wondering what that was. Turns out that it was uh, the, they have a little scavenger hunt that you can do that takes you around all of the resort to the different buildings, and it's in a scroll shape because it comes with uh, the slap bracelets around it, which kids from the late '80s, which early '90s know. I all was of not that. familiar yeah. with them so, until yeah. Rhino so kind of lost, yeah. lost his mind. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, it's a slap bracelet! But she was like, as soon as we asked about it, like I just remember her face lit up, and she was all like, "Oh yeah, how many do you want? You can." Yeah. And that's the one that I remember the most. She was I, nice. I had a good experience in the um, in the cafeteria actually, uh, because the um, the woman who went to make my plant based burger, I was wearing a shirt that said "Love is Love," and she was very emphatic about really enjoying my shirt, yelling at me. She spoke to me for a little bit, and then she when she gave me a burger, she was very friendly, very outgoing. Um, and I, honestly, I feel like everybody could have taken a lesson from her, really, because she was her energy was great. The rest. We're kind of. Hmm. I didn't really have a. I didn't. I didn't have a negative interaction with anybody. It just. I. I honestly, I didn't encounter too many cast members. Really. Yeah. See, and 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 for me, the the high water mark. Um. For me, in, in this process, I'm not sure where this show goes and yeah. the uh, the order of release, but um, I had an experience at one particular resort. I'll say that, where the cast members surprisingly so. Yeah. A, another value resort. So it. Let, kind of narrows it down <laughs> cast members were absolutely out of this world i mean top yeah. notch like old school disney friendly helpful wonderful cast members everywhere i went and you know that's the way it's supposed to be now i i didn't i didn't feel that as you guys said i didn't feel that any of the cast members were were bad or rude i just you know, like they just, I don't, I they didn't, were non memorable. They were not memorable. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I was, I didn't walk away going, wow, you know what? Cast members here are amazing. Um, not to say there aren't amazing cast members of Pop Century, just nobody really stood out to us like that. Um, they were perfectly professional and they were perfect, you know, but that's yeah. not what you look for at a Disney Resort, right? I mean, you want professional, but you want some of that magic, you want some of that interaction. Um, I think my problem is it it resorts this one included the ones I'm very familiar with I go in like I own the place and I know everything about it so I don't a lot of times I don't end up interacting with them where it's like theme parks you are almost forced to be at the mercy of cast members at points and the hotels are a little different with that but the ones I'm not as familiar with I do find myself uh, interacting with a lot more cast members and I see it more so uh, I I definitely would agree with this one though no one no one went out of their way to like be amazing at all times yeah. but it, I, I will say um, this resort does offer before we skip over the um, some of the other things that you enjoyed about a stay at another resort that you liked they did they have activities set up throughout the day specific days of the week um, where they do the tie-dye shirts they do um Movie Under the Stars, although they were supposed to have it the night I was staying there, but they did not. I well, I just I just cold. want to say, though, the tie-dye shirts, among the best souvenirs I've ever gotten. I've got two of them. I just noticed you've been wearing them a lot. <laughs> and I, you know, I wear them in the morning when I wake up. I, I put one of them on with my sweatpants and just my, you know, kind of roll around the house. We get here before Pete gets dressed. I'm not spending the nights here, just so we're clear. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. realize how I just said that, followed in with that. I actually just realized this morning, I was like, where the heck did he get a Mickey Mouse tie-dye yeah, shirt at? That's, that's what I was thinking about. Um, yeah. And, you know, and they're, 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 
It was a lot of fun having them made. You can make them yourself with their help, of course, or they'll do it for you and you can pick out the colors you want. Really cool to watch it get done. $18, $19 to get one of these. That's, you know, it's unique. It's different. It's inexpensive. Not too many times you can say that at Walt Disney World. So, yeah, yeah, all the value resorts do it. Um, I don't know about the moderates. I didn't see it being done at the moderates. But I think all the value resorts are doing it. And it's a great... I will say. Fun activity and really inexpensive. I had an incident while I was there, though. Um, so we've talked a lot about the um, Do Not Disturb mm-hmm. signs, and now they have the ones that are like Peter Pan, right? The, the, it's supposed to be like they're yeah, off to Neverland or you're here, whatever. So um, I did ask for a late checkout the first day because I was just going to do the daily fix there. And then um, I called. Then they called me back and said it was okay. Then the custodial manager or housekeeping manager i'm sorry also called me very very nice um lady and she just was confirming the time and everything and you know and there was a housekeeper in my so i went down to get breakfast and then came back and there was a housekeeper in my room when i got back and she was like oh and then as she was leaving she's like what time are you leaving and i'm like i don't know i was like till when i have to leave because this was at like 8 30 in the morning and i'm like i don't i don't know lady and so then i go to take a shower and some and i thought i heard the door somebody came in the room while i was in the shower like wow so i i, I had the the double the, the extra like the corner lock thing on so i heard them slam that this is after i spoke to three different individuals about not coming in the room till i was done because I was like, oh, I'm going to late checkout. I'm just getting dressed and whatever, you know. And so, like, and I had literally just been standing in my room naked. So that's a visual yeah. for everybody. But I'm very, like, I don't want people to see me naked. People don't want to see me naked. But that is my fear, like, since I've been a little kid, has been, like, people walking in. Well, you don't have your clothes on. And I'm like, I don't know. I just it didn't sit right with me, especially after having three conversations with people. Yeah. And, and the woman was cleaning on my floor I, that I was like, I'm not going to be I, here. I had a similar thing at Coronado, not to that extent, but I left around, I th- want to say it was like 1030 to walk over towards the the um, uh, the main building and came back at like 1055, still time to be in the room. I didn't have late checkout, but I could already tell based on where stuff was that the housekeeper came in because the cart was right beside. I could tell that she came in Mm. and then I, she was standing outside. And so she just kind of watched me then for a while. So I think they are, I think it, it's not okay, but I think they're also getting pressed by their leadership to say, get these rooms turned over at whatever cost possible, get them cleaned and get them ready for the next people. So overall uh, scale of one to 10, Craig, what do you give uh, pop century? I would probably give it somewhere around a seven. So I, I enjoy I enjoy this resort, especially when you look at the price points for it. I think it's it is probably the if you get the new room, I think it's the best value you're going to get at a value resort. I, I think based on the experience that just based on the experience I had in my stay there with the construction, the everything, I would give it like a five. But after seeing the new room. And what could what could be? I would yeah. Give, imagine I, the new room without the construction. The new room without the construction. I would I would give it yeah a, seven maybe even like I don't know if you're there with family and friends it could be even a little bit higher. But I give it like a base seven. Yeah, and this is going to be a, a Skyliner resort. Uh, it's, yeah, that would bump it up even in, a little bit so, further. Well, yeah, it's explain to be folks. Very popular. Explain to folks what you're talking about. The Skyliner is the gondola system that's being placed in, so uh, it's going to share a station with Art of Animation. Uh, right across the way so this will be uh, it's still going to be a value resort but this is going to be a highly coveted because it's going to connect to uh, the Caribbean beach area The uh, it's going to eventually it can take you to Epcot as well as Hollywood Studios so it is going to be a prime prime area to stay in for resort transportation at least All right. well there you have it that's our take on Disney's Pop Century Resort as part of our Seven Resorts in Seven Days series. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again tomorrow with another episode of our Seven and Seven. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Have a great one. Bye.